Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Just let uh, a few more moments to go past us to uh, everyone get here and then uh, we'll crack on for sure. I hope you're all doing well. And um, by all means, feel free to introduce yourself into the chat as well. Keep your cameras on and off. It's very informal here, so it's completely up to you. Uh, let us know about your charity, where you're from, what your mission is as well. Uh, these sessions are great for uh, sharing as well. So some of the answers to questions today may not necessarily come from just from me. It may come from yourselves there today. So feel free uh, to do that as well. So I'll just wait a, uh, another moment. Some people coming in. Lovely. Hello. Hello, Tom. Okay, so I'm sure we've got lots of questions coming in today. We've certainly got a fair few pre-submitted ones today as well. So let's get um, cracking on. So, so hello everyone. Uh, my name's Joel. I'm the uh, programs manager here at Charity Digital, and uh, welcome to our cybersecurity Q and A session. Ask us anything. So I thought it'd be a good uh, it'd be a good start uh, with a bit of context about our mission at Charity Digital uh, for those who don't know. The Charity Digital, uh, we are a charity that helps other charities increase their impact uh, by being more digital. Uh, we have two uh, primary acti uh, activities. Uh, so that's providing access to software products uh, that charities need or at dramatically reduced prices, and publishing content, articles, uh, podcasts, videos, etc., and running webinars such as today and events and educate charity professionals and volunteers on how to make better use of digital tools and technologies. We're here today uh, to answer questions uh, you may have about cybersecurity, uh, give you any guidance that you need and encourage knowledge sharing with all of the charities present in this chat. Please feel free to add any answers to the chat box for any of the questions that do arise. Uh, we, like I said earlier, we love sharing tips amongst the uh, community. And perhaps you might have some information yourself, which is outside of the, uh, about the answers that I'll be going through today. Um, just out, just want to give a quick shout out uh, to helping with production today. So that's my colleagues uh, James and Kiara, uh, who will be uh, saying things like you see their little um, sort of things in chat, saying hello, uh, helping out with links as well, like important links which are shared today as well. Um, so yeah, big thanks to them in advance for helping the production with today as well. So before we begin, uh, just want to remind you that this webinar is recorded, recording uh, with captions, slides, and any links uh, discussed today will be made available to you over the coming days. Uh, so keep an eye on your inbox. The closed captions are available uh, for today's session. The instructions uh, for these can be found in the chat box. So don't forget, if you do have a question, uh, pop it in the chat box. We have received quite a few questions in advance, so uh, thank you for those who submitted these. So those will take the initial priority before we come to those in chat. Uh, so yeah, we'll run through those to start and then we'll make our way through the questions that are in the chat. But, uh, once the session ends, uh, if you need to pop off any earlier at all before we finish, uh, you will be prompted for feedback. We'd love to hear your thoughts on how we can continue to help your organisation. So please take a few minutes to share your thoughts. It's, uh, really really does help us out and i'm sure i'll mention it a few times today as well how valuable your your comments and feedback is to us so without further ado um i'll make a start with the first question there today so let's have a look so some have names and some don't so i'll give you a shout out as well so the first one is from charlie at handcrafted a couple of questions for, uh, from them so thank you very much so the first question is what are the specific cyber security risks associated with phones what size does a charity need to be before it should uh, start considering MDM, so mobile device management software? So thanks for that, Charlie. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a great question there. And, and obviously phones are you know, a big part of what charities do now. Um, and potentially uh, they're, they're, they're actually being looked at as a requirement in cyber essential certification as well as now as well. So I'm glad you brought that topic up. So, oh, and I guess the main risks uh, associated with phones would be insecure data storage. Uh, that's the main one, um, as it can't always be like sort of protected or encrypted uh, on a mobile device correctly or safely. Um, adware is a very common uh, one as well, as it's easy for adware to associate itself with a mobile device. So adware can come from anything from perhaps you've gone for a website and you might have just clicked an OK when it pops up and then you, then you might start. 
you know, receiving notifications. Now, they're not always malicious, but sometimes uh, websites like that, um, they, when you do click OK to certain links or things like that, um, it, it's a potential risk as well. So that's one to look out for as well. In terms of charity size, now, in, in my opinion, now uh, with the technology that's available, uh, charities of any size uh, should be using mobile device management software. Uh, the reason being is that uh, one of the most popular forms of management device software is provided by Microsoft, something called Intune. Now, Intune is included with a subscription called Microsoft 365 Business Premium. Uh, there are fantastic discounted rates on that uh, on that product now. Um, very affordable. I mean, we provide it at 90 pence per user per month there as well. So it's it's in the commercial world that license is, I think it's around 20 pounds a month as well. So it, it's very affordable. Um, so that should be something that you're looking at. So it's something that even micro charities should be able to consider uh, purchasing. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously be using, you want to be looking at mobile device management software if you're using your mobile device towards the purposes of your charity as well. So I guess that's where, if you're not using your phone for it, then maybe not so much, but pretty much these days with charities and how flexible and remote we always work, um, it seems to be part and parcel now that uh, mobile phones are included in our, in, our, in, in our list of devices that we use to do our work. So thank you very much for that. So next question. Um, yeah, again from Charlie. So is it useful to back up data stored on cloud devices or does this not mitigate cybersecurity risks? So it's always wise to back up data. Um, as there can be risks outside of society, uh, cybersecurity, which could cause issues. So such as a loss of data due to human error does happen. Or sometimes, very occasionally, there can be mistakes made by IT support companies that maybe support a charity services. There could be something goes wrong at their end. So backing up data doesn't mean that you don't need cybersecurity. So as well as backup, you want to be looking at stuff like um, endpoint protection, like your, like your antivirus, that type of thing as well. Um, and also email protection um, as well, which isn't always included in uh, endpoint protection. So an example of email protection uh, would be Windows Defender, which goes back to what, what I mentioned earlier about business premium. So business premium also includes uh, Windows Defender. So it comes with a form of email protection uh, with that. So yeah, hope you found that useful. Oh, oh yeah, and also in terms of your backup options as well, if you're looking at that, uh, for Charity Digital Exchange, we have a discount on the product Veritas. So there's a couple of products available via Veritas at, dis at charitable discounted rate on our catalogue, uh, which the link will be shared in a moment. Um, so yeah, you might want to be looking at for your backup, backup, backup options there. So yeah, moving on to the next question. So this is from a from a Lionheart. So I don't know if that's a charity or an excellent nickname for Richard, who knows? But um, we are uh, Microsoft 365 users and have all of our laptops and mobile phones, Android, enrolled in Intune. Oh, there we go, talk about Intune again. So we have multi-factor authentication in place and conditional access policies, which enforce only enrolled device having access to our environment. Given this setup, I'm wondering if it is necessary to have any security software on our mobile phones, such as antivirus, uh, VPNs, or virtual private networks, et cetera. So that's a really good question there. Um, and it's one that's often that, that's up for debate. And I've been fortunate enough to be sort of around a few sort of debates with IT companies, you know, in, in terms of our partners and their opinions on this. Um, it comes up to that debates a lot. I mean, one, one side of the coin I've heard, and this might relate to yourselves using Microsoft 365, is that uh, there are some companies who are quite happy, uh, IT companies who are quite happy to provide your typical AV, um, uh, sorry, antivirus endpoint protection to their customers and then just have them on in tune for their mobile devices. Um, and and they're, they're quite happy uh, with their policies for meeting cyber essential certification with that. Um, however, that, that's just one side of the coin, and it isn't like a yes or no, it's just opinions. But what I would say is um, in terms of, you know, just having in tune in place is, is useful by itself, of course, but still antivirus for your phone um, is certainly worth thinking about as well as the more security is the better. 
Uh, VPNs, um, I would say, definitely be strongly recommended if the mobiles used by users in your organization are using sort of various Wi-Fi, public Wi-Fi connections on a uh, regular basis. So if you find that you're using your phones, perhaps like in a in a cafe or, or, or you know, like a coffee shop, uh, and you're using the Wi-Fi to connect to the internet, that might be a, that might be a scenario where you might still want to consider uh, VPNs um, for, for your mobile phones on top of using Intune. So yeah, thank you very much for that. So to the next question, so a couple have not been named, but that's okay. So I've recently purchased a laptop with Microsoft 365 license that came with Windows Defender. Is this high enough security requirement for my charity's needs? So yeah, good question there. And it goes back to a little bit, uh, a moment ago, I spoke about Windows Defender. So it actually has two plans, uh, Windows Defender. So it's called plan one and plan two, although the first plan is not often called plan, but it's included with a few different 365 subscriptions. So Windows Defender is great for email protection via Microsoft. So if you're using Microsoft, it's a great terms of protection or sort of incoming emails um, to suspicious links coming via email and that, uh, which is which is really great. Um, but Windows Defender, the, the, the normal option, which comes with a Microsoft 365 license, um, it isn't a true endpoint protection. So it's not protecting your device as a whole. It's just protecting the email side of things. Now, you said you've got a Microsoft 365 license uh, with a laptop. I'm not sure what version that would be. I mean, it could be a personal or family version, or if you did come with business premium, if, if, if it sounds like you might have got business premium as it had Windows Defender included. But you do have the option of upgrading to Windows Defender Plan 2, uh, if you want to. Um, that will then change uh, your protection um, to an endpoint protection as well as email protection as well. Um, but on the side of that, what many organizations do is that they will run Windows Defender, the standard version, alongside antivirus as well. So, for example, with Avast, for, uh, you know, you could run Avast or Bitdefender for your endpoint protection to protect your device and then have a Windows Defender uh, as protection for suspicious links and emails. So, yeah, thank you for that question. I hope you found it useful. OK. Next question, what cybersecurity offers or guidance could we take advantage of as a nonprofit organization? So, okay, so I gather that the fact you mentioned as a nonprofit organization, uh, that you're not a charity, but like I said you're a nonprofit, and um, it's a very different world in terms of offers that are out there available compared to what charities can get access to software wise to nonprofits. It's very, very restricted. Um, but yeah, there's a few options that you can still take advantage of. Uh, in terms of guidance, uh, we have our friends at the National Cyber Security Centre. Um, I would always re recommend them as the first stop shop for any sort of cyber security queries, um, how to implement sort of structure uh, within your organisation as well. So that's something you can take advantage of, you know, for growing the website. It's a great tool set for your organisation. If you're looking at Cyber Essentials accreditation, which is a big topic these days, which I'm happy to hear, um, the National Cyber Security Centre can help you point out the right direction. Uh, but you might want to look at IASME, um, who, who you, you can help you uh, get your accreditation for that. So yeah, some links of all these are coming through shortly. So thanks, uh, thanks to the team for doing that. Um, and outside, in terms of offers available, um, our partners are vast, um, certainly. Um, that they offer non-profit offers uh, for their software as well. So um, by all means, if you if you do want to get some sort of endpoint protection, antivirus, uh, and lots of other things in the Avast catalog, um, you can get an access to discounted rates uh, via Charity Digital as well. So you can, even though you, you don't hold the charitable status, you can still get a great discount via Charity Digital uh, for Avast products as well. So there's, there's still a few options out there for non-profit organizations. So next question, we are looking at MDM solutions for our charity. Uh, what options are there? So MDM again, again, so going back to sort of the mobile phones uh, topic again. Um, one thing that's been mentioned already in a previous question is Microsoft Intune. Um, so it can be purchased as a separate license. It's included in the Microsoft 365 Business Premium offer I mentioned earlier as well. 
and it's also part of a family called uh, Enterprise Mobility um, and Security as well. Um, so that's something that you can, that's a, you know, in the world of Microsoft that you can look at as well. Uh, that's available at a charitable discount. Um, if you're looking at uh, to upgrade your network in general, um, so maybe you're, you, you know, you're in an office and you want to, you're looking at your routers and your hardware to do with your network. Um, Cisco has a fantastic range of hardware, um, and it also comes with a product which is called a Manager Enterprise Device License, uh, which can unify your mobile device management, so your Macs, PCs, phones, etc. Um, it's a five-year license as well, um, seventeen pounds as well. It's a really good offer, but to to use that type of license, you'll need to have sort of Cisco equipment implemented um, in your office or, or premises as well. But like I said, there's some great discounts for charities there as well. So I hope you found that useful. Next question: We have a lot of passwords uh, for our various systems and databases. Uh, what is the best way to store these? Yeah, great question. We're, we, there's a product on our catalog actually called uh, Dashlane, uh, which is precisely what it does on the tin there. So it's it's a password uh, sort of um, storage manager there, so you can store your password safely, um, as well as payment methods and other private information too as well. So we have um, an access to discounted rates offer on Charity Digital Exchange, uh, which you may want to take advantage of for Dashlane. Okay. Next question, what software or hardware would be looked at for our audit for cyber essentials? Okay, so, so typically this will be advised by your cyber essentials provider. So they'll give you a list of exactly what's need to be investigated. Uh, however, generally speaking, just a couple of, I get, I guess, some information in advance for you um, is that you will need to ask each user of your organization uh, to provide uh, firstly like a system summary. So if they're using their PC or Mac, just it, there's a set, like for example, if you use PC, I use PC, um, you can go to a system summary section and it will have like all these various like outlays of your PC setup and that. So that, that's something that'll be, uh, you like, take a screenshot of it or something like that and, and provide it to them um, or, or not, not to them, but provide it to your IT person who's looking after that. Um, outside of that as well, um, they'll want the details of any sort of other devices, such as phones, are a hot topic today, phones or tablets, so they'll, they'd want to know something like the type of phone, uh, the model name, operating system version as well that's currently being used. I think so outside of that as well, if you're working remotely, uh, they will not want to know details of your broadband as well, so your internet ISP, internet service provider, um, so that could be so that would be the name of your provider. So, you know, world of like, you know, like BT, or, you know, other Virgin Sky, that kind of thing. Uh, provider, uh, the model of your router uh, and the model number as well. Um, so those are just a few examples to sort of prepare you in advance. It sounds like you're doing something in advance. So that's something to look out for. There are some more things, but like I said, your cyber essential provider will list exactly what information uh, they need from you. Okay, so looks like all the preemptive stuff, uh, sort of pre-submitted chat questions. So thank you very much for those. Let's have a look in chat. Okay, so Glenn Jones, Lionheart. Okay, so I got the nickname right. So you're from Lionheart. Sorry about that, Glenn. So as your question from chat is, has anyone had any experience of running phishing simulations? Oh, that's, yeah. So there's one which we could suggest. Uh, it, it's... In terms of phishing, there's a software out there called No Before, which you might want to take advantage of, which it doesn't just do phishing simulations, but what it does, it's a really good training document uh, tool where uh, what it will do is it will send it to you and each user of your organization will be emailed like a questionnaire, um, quite a few questions on site to sort of gauge their cybersecurity knowledge. So it's an the questions can really vary. It can be really some of the questions you might laugh at to something that could be, you know, some people won't understand. Uh, but what will happen is when you complete this questionnaire, um, know before, um, so that's K-N-O-W-B-E -E, and then number four, what they'll do is that once they get the results from each user, each user will receive a, a sort of a tailored uh, training 
uh, sort of material based on their answers. So they'll, if they got answers wrong in certain sections, they'll then be asked to go on a training course to work on the parts that they didn't have knowledge about. Um, so it does include things like phishing, what links not to click, all that kind of thing as well. So OB4 might be a really good tool for you uh, to look outside of that. I'm, I'm not unaware we don't work with them directly, but it's a really good tool. So by all means, I, I'm not sure if there's any sort of charitable discount or anything like that. But like we say in all of our webinars is um, if you don't ask, you don't get. So any sort of software provider or even hardware provider always ask for a non-profit discount or charitable discount if you can. And um, yeah, it could be a really good, useful um, training tool for you and the other members of your organization. And let's have a look here. Another one, just a comment here as well. As a domestic abuse charity, we were eligible for funded cyber essentials program. Okay. All oh, right. Yeah. I mean, it, so uh, is, that, is that more of a, I guess it's an FYI, I guess, with that one. So, okay. Yeah. I know that there, there are certain sort of grants to made to certain organizations with their cyber essentials, but, um, but yeah, I guess that was an FYI for people in chat there. So anyone else might want to take advantage of that link um, provided there. That's really, really great as well. Um, so yeah, one thing to comment as well, it looks like the, uh, one I, I know I mentioned um, a few moments ago uh, is the National Cyber Security uh, Centre, where they're really, really great organisation. We've been working uh, a long time for a while. It, um, it's that they provide a lot of free information, bite-sized information, on how to make your um, organization more uh, cyber aware. They've got some great tools as well. Um, what you might want to do is actually sign up for our National Cyber Security Workshop. Uh, really useful link, um, link might be there in a, uh, yeah, in a moment. So yeah, by all means, if you want to sort of enhance or get better at your cyber security as well, um, definitely sign up for the National Cyber Security uh, Workshop. Okay, another question in chat from Glenn. Hey, does Charity Digital have any discounts on AV software for Android phones? I believe there is one. It will either be Bitdefender. I think it's Bitdefender. It will either be Bitdefender or Norton. There will be discounts on that. We can find a link for you that on shortly. Uh, but yeah, for, for Android phones, I believe, yeah, it will be Bitdefender or, or Norton products. Um, one thing to watch, uh, just be wary of, I'm, I'm not sure all the details of your charity there, Glyn. But um, for those who aren't aware, um, we have charity digital products. Um, charitable status alone doesn't guarantee your eligibility. So each of the partners decide to provide products to certain types of organizations based on their charitable activities, but also their income as well. So for example, I know that Bitdefender, um, they choose to provide their nonprofit discounts to some might consider smaller charities, I guess, um, but those with uh, an income of less than $1.4 million, as it's a global pro program, uh, would be eligible um, for, for Bitdefender products there. So yeah, um, just double check that with yourself there, Glenn. And um, yeah, if, if, you, if your organization fits that criteria, I'm sure you can take advantage of that. Okay. So I think that's the end of the sort of main questions. And also, like I said earlier, make sure to uh, leave us some feedback uh, as well. It's really, really useful to us to help improve these sessions. And um, we've been doing them for over a year now. Um, forms of various Q and A's. Um, this one today is sort of a cybersecurity theme one as we enter cybersecurity month, which is great. The by all means, give us feedback on that would be really, really useful. But yeah, I'll just have a look. Let's have a, and there's an FYI here as well. I've spoken to a company called Boxfish who offers cybersecurity training at phishing simulations. Looks very good. Oh, okay, great. Excellent. Excellent, that's good. Well, yeah, glad. Thank you very much for sharing that. That's really good, uh, Boxfish. Excellent. Um, yeah, so they're out there as well. Like I mentioned, Mo before is a really good tool. Like I said, a little bit different. Not It's not just phishing simulations, but um, something else to consider as well. And what I really enjoyed about Mo before is that, um, it's the questions can be answered by anyone in your organization. I would say from frontline all the way to the top decision makers. It's, um, it doesn't take very long. Um, it's really good to get a, a, like a good discipline across your organization uh, regarding sort of cybersecurity and what steps you can do, easy steps and things like that as well. So yeah, no, thanks for sharing that, Boxfish.
very good. All right, so just uh, a few more moments. See any more questions in the chat? Great turnout today. So thank you very much for the questions. I've asked some really, really good preemptive questions that come through today as well. I've um, really kept me on my toes. And um, also, I do like the preemptive questions as well, as it allows me to uh, do a little bit of research before as well. So it makes me look a, look more knowledgeable than maybe I am to and than I actually am on these things. So yeah, thank you for sending any sort of pre-submitted questions. Really appreciate that. Okay. All right, then. So I think that might be the end of the sort of the pre-submitted uh, sort of any questions today. So that's it for everyone. Um, thank you very much uh, for joining us today for this uh, very informal session on cybersecurity. As it is Cybersecurity Month, we've got lots of things, uh, cybersecurity themes across this month. So keep an eye this is up to date with charities across this month regarding your cybersecurity needs. And uh, yeah, just make sure that you join got the workshop I mentioned a few moments ago with the National Cybersecurity Centre, but we also have another webinar um, within a few weeks. Um, so it's join our cybersecurity webinar, best practices in cybersecurity. It's actually presented by our friends at Avast as well, so you can get some real good tips uh, from one of the leading providers of uh, cybersecurity. In fact, award-winning cybersecurity, as they as they put it as well. So by all means, um, yeah, join us for that as well. And I'd just like to say uh, thank you for joining today.